if you want to skip over what little grinding is left, go to the 2 minutes 23 seconds mark. Then we're back to working our way towards Bill. There's gonna be plenty of trainers on the way, that's for sure. So despite how little ground we've actually got together, it's still going to take quite a bit of work to get over there. Still, it's not like we have some deadline we absolutely have to meet before we're allowed to meet him or something to that effect. He's in no hurry to leave his house, just like nobody between us and him is ever going to budge. Definitely a shame I don't really give a damn about the Oddish, Gloom, and Vile Plume line. Is that somewhat annoying thing if I kinda like the first form? I think the second form is pretty damn dumb, and the third form just doesn't make up for the second. Whereas I think that the Bell Sprout, uh, well, that looks fine. Weeping Bell is a bit of an improvement, and Victory Bell is actually kinda great. Not that either line has any chance in hell to compete with the likes of Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur in terms of my favorite grass line in the first generation. It's just such a shame that the only way to have a Bulbasaur is to pick that starter, at least assuming you aren't playing through Pokemon Yellow. Considering there's a way to grab all three starters along your journey, can't help feeling Yellow made it all too easy to have a super team. Possibly to make up for you having to start off with an electric type when the very first gym in the region is rock type. And with that, our humble fish has now grown into the monster he was always meant to be. Welcome to adulthood, Takanobori. May you never forget the humble cart you started as, now that you've changed lanes on the road to glory. Now if only the portrait we see actually showed how much larger this somehow not a dragon type is compared to the small fish he started as. Of course, when it comes to uh, scale, it feels like a lot of the media, from game to anime, isn't always all that consistent on how large these Pokémon are, or how much they weigh, or various other bits of trivia. Well, Thunder Wave would certainly be helpful when trying to get an Abra. Too bad absolutely none of our current roster could even try to pull that move off. Maybe I should just bring Toy Maru back just for the sake of catching the Abra. Right, nothing else on the ground yet, so let's start going through all the trainers on this road. Well, at least he didn't start off with a rock type. That would have been a bit annoying. Right, do everything you can to extend your lead, Nim, because I haven't decided yet if you or Mig, another high-scoring member of our team at this point, is going to be replaced when we finally get that Abra on the squad. Granted, I'd feel guilty about replacing either one of them, but still, it'd feel a bit absurd not to have any Psychic-capable Pokémon when this is a generation when Psychic doesn't have an actual counter. I appreciate you noticing, but too bad you're not really worth showing all that effort to so far. Wait, 
You're blaming a Zubat biting you when Zubats don't cause confusion with mites. And what makes it worse is you could have easily gone to town for treatment since Cerulean City is between this spot and Mount Moon's exit. Well, that Rattata didn't last long. Dear God, Hyper Fang has got to be our hardest hitting attack at this point. Technically, it might be better to send Marble back out here, but then I want to try to keep everyone as close to even in level as possible. Besides, it's not like Meg or Kohaku are weak to flying types. Right, 95 wins for the team so far. A bit of a shame that there's no real way for us to give the Pokémon who gets the 100th win a reward of some kind. Especially since I only started counting the wins long after I'd finished recording everything we needed from the first generation. Oh, I know, and it's a bit of a shame that two of the ones that have proven to be the most effective for us this early in the game are not going to be permanent members, since we want more type coverage overall. Again, part of me would kind of like to be able to have more than just six Pokémon on our belt, especially since we generally have a numbers advantage anyway, due to the fact that we rarely come up against anyone who has more than four Pokémon with them. Hell, this guy literally has just one with him. One that is a very bad matchup for me. Yeah, I can't even find it in me to call that a fight, considering that went so much faster than Brock's Onyx. Well, unfortunately, it'd be more troublesome to get to that supposed shortcut from here, since there are plenty of trainers between us and where that shortcut begins. Again, this looks like it should be a job for Phyllis, but at least it's not a terrible matchup for Meg this time. Was kind of hoping that Peck would do more damage than his return strike. Right. Of course, we got confused after enough hits. Damn, so close to me getting another mark on his scorecard. Well, here's hoping that Slowpoke doesn't have any water moves. I suppose it should make sense that we were faster than something literally called a slowpoke. Anyway, time to get back to the Pokémon Center. Well, I'm sorry to have to say this to you, kid, but there are a lot more Pokémon across the world now than when this game was made. Part of me wishes the remake actually threw in a lot of Pokémon from different regions to the ones in the SSN, but to be fair, it was a pretty minor location for us to visit in Kanto. A minor location that we're coming through a lot of effort in order to be able to be given the right to enter it. But still, it's not like there are too many locations that feel like major ones to me, since uh, the story doesn't really have much other than uh, the bare bones basics. Well, this should go pretty well in Mig's direction, or at least better than the last fight.
kind of surprised Horn Attack didn't do more to us. Not really complaining, just surprised. Well, I see no reason to take Mig out of the fight, especially since neither and females don't have Horn Attack or anything that hits quite that hard. We've got 99 total trainer wins, and I can't quite pull off a 99 problems joke out of it. Unless, you don't get to complain about bad condition when we're the ones who went through numerous trainers just to get to your position. Granted, we went to a Pokemon Center before the fight with you, but still. You know, I'd believe that if I ever got the sense that you ever move from this position where we find you. Right! Looks like the hundredth win isn't gonna go to Mig. Sorry, buddy, I just don't like throwing birds at stones. Not unless the bird is named Mobius and the stone is called Stonehenge. Probably not the best place for an Ace Combat 4 joke, but that's what popped into my head right there. Anyway, Phyllis just got us our hundredth win, and it didn't even manage to put him in the lead on the board. Though to be fair, he's tied with Nim for the top spot now, and definitely gonna keep on rising through this fight. Now he's on top of the board! Mig, let's see if you can take down this fighting type in a hurry. Part of me was expecting it to be a one-hit wonder, but I suppose two hits isn't all that bad. Still, that was a super effective hit with a move that was further enhanced by the fact that it's Mig's preferred typing. Sure, Peck isn't especially strong, but still, it's kind of amazing that an ace like Mig managed to get so many wins with that move if the combination of level difference, super effectiveness, and the same type as a technique didn't equal a one-shot win there. Yeah, maybe it's just me trying to justify benching the poor Mon in the future despite all he's done for us so far. What makes it hurt even more is that again, I like the Spiro Firo line. Not that I even remember what level Spiro evolves anyway. Well, I should certainly hope he does, since he's supposed to be a renowned collector, though you'd think that the guy who created the original storage system, which probably involves some teleportation technology of some kind, would have done more to collaborate with the guy who created the Pokedex. Oh, that's possibly just another case of me thinking about things that the game really doesn't expect you to think about as you wander all over uh, the Pokemon world in this first iteration. Ugh. Right, that's seven wins for Marbleback so far. He's a long ways from the top scorers on the board, but hey, an ace is an ace. Besides, it has more to do with him not having as many opportunities than it does him actually being worse than the ones with more than 20 wins. Of course he managed to poison a bloody rock before we took him down. Because that snake just had to be a spiteful little bastard on his way to Dreamland. Anyway, Marbleback now has more wins on his card than Bellram does. That's worth a clap or two, isn't it? Well, if your girl is the same one who was bragging about having a boyfriend on this road, I'm kind of sure she's just going to say, I wish you were as awesome as that kid that beat the crap out of both of us. On one hand, 
I kind of want to laugh at the fact that this is one of the only worlds I can think of where a sane young woman would say something like that. On the other hand, I kind of wish both of them luck with their current relationship since they both have some growing up to do. Or that they find someone who helps them grow. But I suppose their relationship doesn't really matter all that much. At least not to us, since us battling them is the only time we'll ever interact with them. And wow! I can't help thinking about just how lonely Jack probably is right now. At least by the standards of people who live on Earth and uh, don't have the benefit of, an in of all the various intelligent pets with superpowers. Again, that's probably not something we're supposed to think all that much about. Well, of course you did! We've been fighting everyone else on this side of the bridge, and we're not gonna let anyone willing to battle go unattended! Please don't tell me we're gonna get poisoned by another of these snakes! So instead, he's just gonna take advantage of the fact that he's faster, and prevent us from striking back in the first place. Not quite as annoying, but still. I'm not entirely clear on this one. Is it possible for an enemy trainer to run out of moves for their Pokémon like we can? Granted, there's no risk of that happening in this particular time, but uh, still. It feels like the kind of advantage a game designer would give the AI when said AI isn't all that intelligent in the first place. Yeah, may as well switch out since Marbleback has made it to level 20. Not that being at that level would make him tough enough to uh, make up for being a rock when we're about to enter the water gym relatively soon. surprised that Sand Shrew didn't throw any sand into our eyes. Of course, I'm also surprised that something named after a shrew is so cute and cuddly. As someone who has actually seen a shrew manage to get himself caught in a non-lethal mousetrap, I have to say those little bastards are downright terrifying. They are hyperactive, pretty damn aggressive, and if they sleep, it's not a restful one. I suppose that's enough talk for now about an actual animal that exists in the real world. Let's get back to beating down the fictional creatures that everyone keeps saying are our friends, but the main use we've seen for them in this game is recreational combat. And we won't see any mainline games expand on that until the third generation, if I'm remembering right. Not too sure Mig's gonna do all that well against a Pidgey in this current state, still. No harm in giving him a shot to keep adding to his score. Okay, that exchange went a lot better than I was expecting. Why what made me feel so pessimistic when we've seen Mig take down plenty of other Pidgeys with ease? And with that, Mig is in second place with 22 victories on his belt. Assuming a bird can wear a belt. Ah, congratulations on growing into a creature that shares a shape with the three legendary birds of Kanto. Very well done, Mig. 
Part of me is tempted to have him go up against the legendary birds, but since I'm not planning on capturing those legendaries, I figure it's a better idea to leave them alone altogether instead of just battling them as if they were trainer-held Pokémon. Anyway, with that, all that's left is to talk to Bill, which we'll do next time. Wish I knew if he was trying to stay isolated or if it's just a scale of the game that makes this feel like an out-of-the-way location.